are there like benefits that you're offering, uh, you know, contractors and employees or activities that you're trying to do that are, you know, uh, trying to enhance, you know, company culture, team building or, or, or that kind of thing? Or, or what, what's, what's your general approach to culture, Sean? Working remotely since 2013 myself. And so when I started that company, I wanted to never have an office because I wanted the freedom to be where I wanted to be, when I wanted to be in that place, and to work when I wanted to, and wear what I wanted to wear when I worked there. And I felt like if I, as the founder of that company, should have that freedom, then why can't everyone else in my team? And so for me, the idea of having a physical space would severely limit our ability to hire great people and be able to really serve a global clientele. The way that I disseminated that culture was when we would do our hiring process for each individual position. Now, this may sound crazy for some of you, but I would make sure that I was the first person that any of those people would talk to on a video call. Now, obviously, we had a few steps before and uh, our hiring process was really interesting. I can go into that if you guys are interested. But basically, we baked psychology into all of it. My background is psychology. And so for me, it was really important to make sure that the kind of people we were attracting could have the simple ability to follow orders, right? So what we would do is we would, now obviously it's, it's more complicated than that, but basically we would post a job ad on LinkedIn and in the ad, we would say, you know, click on this link in order to go through a form to, to apply. So if someone clicked on the LinkedIn apply here button, we discarded them. Why? Because they didn't follow orders, which is click on the link to use this special form. Well, the special form would go to ClickUp. And so we would have all of the information populated for us in ClickUp so that we knew who had applied. And we would look through and we'd see if they didn't have the actual information there, then uh, if they didn't show that they had the experience or specific skills, we would just toss them because we had some people that were like, they had dishwasher experience and were looking for a developer. Clearly, they didn't pay attention. Okay, you're gone. I would reach out and email the ones who I was willing to talk to, and I would say, here's a link to my calendar, schedule a call, and that was it. If they replied and said, I'm available at X day, I would say, thank you, goodbye. Right? Why? They didn't click on the link, which is what I asked them to do. And then I would have the first call with those who survived, and I would you know, ask them eight simple questions that my COO said we need to ask and anything else I want to ask, I can just do. So I would disseminate our culture in that call. I would tell them why I built this company or why I was building this company, learn more about them, ask those eight questions just to see if they uh, were potentially a good fit. If it fit, I would then send them to the next person who would be their hiring manager, whether that was the CTO or the marketing director or whoever. And then they would do the skills test, right? So we set up a hiring process so that every position has a hard skills test. And that way, by having this test, everyone is measured in the same way. And so they would go through the skills test. If they pass the skills test, then they would go on to like the COO or whoever. And, and then we'd have a final decision from there, whether or not we want to hire them. Based on how fast we moved, we could potentially get someone through our entire process in a week depending on how fast they moved. Because for me, I wanted to get it done because every day that they were not working for us was a day that we were not moving. And as a SaaS founder, as a funded company, that could mean the difference between life and death in your business. It's not so much like an agency where you have a ton of cash flow because when you're raising funds from investors, you have an amount of money. And if that money is spent and you don't raise more money, you're dead, you know, in, in the early stages. So it was really important for us to have this very tight uh, corporate culture. And uh, what ended up happening for us was a lot of the people we hired already had jobs, but they quit their jobs to work for us because the jobs they had required them to commute to work. So for example, our company was registered in Singapore. A lot of us were based in Asia. The majority of our employees were um, from the Philippines. Now, they were employees, not contractors. So they had full rights to earn uh, equity and everything like that. Several of the people we hired who already had jobs would commute to work two hours each way each day. So they would waste up to four hours a day going to the office. And they're like, wait a minute, I can work at home all the time? And like, I can set my own hours? Yeah, 
Let, let's go. What are we waiting for, right? And they were super happy. And because we were a foreign company, we were paying them more than they were already getting and, you know, doing everything in our power to to make them happy and, and feel engaged. And we ended up doing like virtual reality team bonding sessions, which is really cool. Just like whatever we could think of that would add value. Obviously there's like way more than all of that, but just thought I would, I would share kind of how I looked at company culture.